Bunny. Bunny, do you want to be famous? <laughs> I think he's already famous, actually, Veronica. And we're here today with Veronica. No, I'll tell you what, you introduce yourself, Veronica. Okay, my name is Veronica Clark, but I'm known at Samaritans as Ronnie. Ah, Ronnie. Okay, now we're here today. Is this an, this is an annual um, sp uh, fundraising event? Well, the the actual Bluebell Walk is open every year, and the um, John McCutcheon, who owns the farm, I mean, he he does a wonderful job over the years. He's helped to raise thousands and thousands of pounds for different charities. So on the wall opposite, you see a list of the charities that come. We're here for two days, and we've been lucky with the weather today so far. It's been lovely. Yes, we have, haven't we? That's very true. I think the weather's going to change at the weekend as well. Well, probably tomorrow. We're here tomorrow as well, so we come well wrapped up tomorrow. And we'll bring some umbrellas up for you then in that case. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're so careful, uh, sorry, caring over here. OK, so tell us a bit about the Samaritans and tell us exactly what, what it is, first of all, that you do for those that don't know what the Samaritans do. Uh, and also after that, we can talk about, um, you know, how this helps you to raise funds for the charity. Yeah. Well, Samaritans was founded, I ought to be able to tell you how many years ago, but I've forgotten, by Chad Vara, um, a priest in London, a, a, a vicar in London. And there are now branches all over the country, over a hundred of them. And our branch is situated in Bolton Road in Eastbourne. Very busy branch because we're right in the town centre. And we're there every day from 10.30 in the morning to 10.30 at night. But we also operate the phones emails and texts into the night as well and the early morning mm. and because we're so central we're, we're very well placed for people who want to just drop in from the road to talk to us so anybody who is in any sort of trouble wanting support and one a misconception about Samaritans is that you can't come and see us unless you're suicidal yes. well we really want to get rid of that because we want people to come and see us before they're feeling that bad um, and um, we are really there to listen, we don't offer advice, we don't counsel, but we listen and just by talking can sometimes help people to see the way forward for themselves. All oh, right, so you act as a sounding board to allow people to, I guess, gather their thoughts. Yes, and sometimes, I mean, there's a lovely analogy that we have in Samaritans in the training, that people come to us and their heads are like the inside of a tumbled dryer. They've got so many worries and problems, they're going round and round. And we say, start wherever you like, tell us about it. And it's like taking the clothes out and folding them one by one. And at the end, they can sometimes see where to go next. What is the most important piece of clothing <laughs> to yeah. pick up or whatever. Yeah. And that's a pretty good analogy, actually. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so, so the Samaritans are moving away from, the, from helping people. Well, not moving away, but I guess opening your arms more then to help other people who aren't just in that traditional yeah. uh, you know, way. Uh, and helping them with other problems. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I don't quite know why that reputation sprung up. I think because originally Chad Vara started the charity because a young woman took her life oh, yeah. and it all came from out of that. Yeah. But of course because we're in Eastbourne and near Beachy Head we're quite a significant point for someone who might be wanting to come who's in trouble. Yes. We hope they'll call in and see us first. Absolutely. Well, we'll make sure that we publicise that as well so that people can, can understand that. So tell us about today then. What, what's been happening here? Well, um, the doors opened about half past nine um, and we have about, I think, 15 to 20 volunteers here at the moment. I'll tell you what, should we have a walk down? Yeah, let's have a walk down. down. Right. Yeah, oh, that's on you. And the, yeah, so we've got 15 to 20 volunteers. volunteers. Here They're the all wearing um, the tabards, uh -huh. and on our left is the big uh, barn, which is like the dining room. And the food is all provided today by the Samaritans, so lots of homemade cakes, this sort of thing. But what is very good about this event is that John is extremely fair because you see the list of charities on the wall, bye bye, <laughs> on the wall over there. Oh, yes. Well, obviously, some people have a day where the weather is not so good, so any gate takings are shared out at the end equally between the charities oh, involved, right. which is great. Over the year? Oh, well, good. just for the few weeks this is open, oh, while okay. the blue bells are here. Oh, yeah, that's true. But yes. all the food that we sell today and the drink, we can keep the money for that. <laughs> and we <laughs> need the great. money. No, absolutely. So I'll just put a little plug here, we really do need the money. So, I mean, it, it costs a lot actually to run a charity, doesn't it? We, we've, we've spoken to quite a few charities yeah. in Eastbourne yeah. recently. And I mean, is this, you don't get any government funding? Yeah, nothing whatsoever, nothing whatsoever. We run a big building which we keep open day and night for our people who want to call and see us and for people answering, the volunteers answering the phone. Um, we've had a lot of work done at the centre recently and we also have a charity shop in um, 
Grove Road in Eastbourne and the, the shop raises most of the money for us that we need to survive but we're just currently having to spend thousands of pounds on work at the shop. So if we don't have the shop, we don't get any funding. So it's in our interest, obviously, to get the shop in tip-top form to raise more money for us. But if anybody wants to give us any, we're always very, very pleased to have it. And also, um, because suicide is something that not everybody wants to talk about, um, we're not the most obvious choice for things like legacies. Um, mm. we, we, I mean, everybody knows someone who's got cancer, right. and so we're all, we're all of us very keen to support charities who are helping people to research with cancer. Mm. But ours is a sort of much, uh, you know, we're operating in a slightly more um, rarefied area. Yes, um, yes. So we don't get as much, you know, we'd like a bit more money. Yeah. Well, yes, exactly. I, like to say that. <laughs> I, th I think it's perfectly fine to say that, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, and so the shop helps with most of your income. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and what, do, you, do you look for donations to the shop? We, we do. Um, well, oh yes, uh, yes, we ask people to, and, and the, obviously this, we have about 100 volunteers working at the centre. Um, about 17 of them are support volunteers and they are helping today, for example, but they don't do the listening. And the rest of them are listening volunteers and they're the ones on the phones, the computers and what have you. Yes. But um, we all bring in stuff for the shop. Oh, okay. um, we have um, we go out on street collections. We do store collections. Um, this will raise a few thousand pounds. Um, what else do we do? But we very. I mean, it's quite. They do brilliantly, the volunteers, mm. because not only are they committing to four hours of duties a week, but they're off, they're out here today. Some will be here for two days. They're raising money. They go on awareness. They they talk to the university, to schools. We go out and visit societies. Yes. Um, we go once a week to the Reborn Centre in Eastbourne, which is run by the Salvation Army, and um, that's a centre, it, it's not just a homeless centre, but it is for people who are having problems of one sort or another, some of them are homeless. Um, what else do we do? Um, so we, we have partnerships with, with the Salvation Army and with, for example, um, survivors of bereavement by suicide, uh, SOBS, and we work closely with um, the um, organisations that try to help people who go to Beachy Head. Right. Which is an important thing, as you say, for Eastbourne as well. It's, it's a significant place, isn't it, for people with, with problems, unfortunately. Yes. Um, just, just, I know that you, you need to go, and thank you very much for, for, you know, for telling us about Samaritans and allowing us to help in our own way. Um, I know that the, the, the listeners, as you call them, go through a lot of training in order to be able to provide the right, well, sort of environment for, for callers. But it's not just callers, is it? There are other methods in this digital age that you can help people. And we also are moving towards instant messaging and uh, I mean I've been a Samaritan for coming up for eight, nine years and just in the time I've been here we've introduced emails, we've introduced texting, we've introduced e-logging, it's a method of recording the calls so we've got the statistics to help us know where we need to provide help. And yes, the training is very thorough. Um, there are, I think, 10 to 11 se training sessions for the first stage, and then our volunteers go and actually do duties supported by a mentor, and then they come back for a second lot of training. And then, um, and even then, you're not, you know, you learn every time you go on duty, you don't know what what's going to happen you don't know what someone's going to tell you yes. but of course it's all completely confidential and I do want to emphasize that everything that's said to us is confidential right. so people are free to phone us if ever they have a worry and it can be they might think it's a little worry but it might be a big worry to them get in touch with us